will you be able to build the most popular casino on the strip or will your rivals outroll you to take over your buildings? With a good strategy and some luck on your side, you can control the strip. Today's game, distributed by Mayfair Games Incorporated and created by James Ernest and Mike Selinker, is a two to four player social strategy game where you will attempt to get the most points to win at Lords of Vegas. First, lay out the board. Place the house card to the side. We'll talk about it later. Every player will then get the dice, player markers, and scoring chips of their color choice. Any extra colors go back into the box. All player scoring chips go at the beginning of the scoring track. Next, choose one player to act as the banker. They will handle all of the money coming out of the bank, so make sure that you can trust them. Go through the property cards and find the endgame card. Set it aside for now. Shuffle the remaining property cards. Deal two cards to each player. Each card has a designated lot starting money allotment, starting die value, and which casinos pay out. For each card, place a player marker or the, on the indicated lot. And gain the starting money allotment. This is the only time that you will get that money. Discard your two cards onto the corresponding color discard pile on the board. The deck has nine cards of each color and four pay the strip cards. So it's important to be able to easily track how many cards of a color have been discarded. Then cut the deck into four equal-ish stacks. Place the end game card on the top of the fourth stack. Place the rest of the stacks on top to create the draw pile. To find out who goes first, roll two dice, and the player with the highest roll is the first player. They get the first player card. After their turn, they will pass the card to the next player sitting on their left. To start playing, you need to know some terminology and who owns what on the board. A lot is a space that does not contain a tile. When you place a player marker on a lot, you now own that lot. When you place a tile on a lot, that lot becomes a casino or part of a casino that you now own. The die represents your influence in that casino. A casino is a group of one or more contiguous tiles of the same color. Once the tiles form one large casino, they cannot be subdivided. Once a tile is placed on a lot, it is no longer considered to be a lot. The player that owns the largest value die in a casino is the boss of that casino. There can only be one boss per casino. I'll talk a little bit more about ties later. Each player's turn will have two phases the draw phase and the play phase. The draw phase starts by drawing a card. If the lot on the card is empty, place a player marker on the lot. If the lot has a tile with another player's player die on it, replace that die with one of your own, keeping the same die value. If there's a tile with no die on it, place one of your dice on it with the pips matching the pips on the board. All owned lots get paid $1 to that owner. So if your starting lot never gets built into a casino, it will pay you $1 for every player's turn until the end of the game. Now each player gets 
gets paid for their casinos. The drawn card tells you who gets paid in money and in points. Every dice pip amount gets paid to that dice player, but only the boss of each casino gets points. Points are awarded based on how many tiles are in a casino. Colored cards pay casinos of that color. Pay the strip cards pay out any casino touching the strip. The scoring chip moves based on how many points you get. Points are also added to the track individually by casino, from the smallest to the largest, but there are breaks along the track. These breaks require more than one point to pass. You need to have earned the required number of points to pass through the break. If you don't have enough points, then your chip stops and you lose those points. So having three one-point casinos does not get you past a two-point break in the track. Now you can discard your card to the appropriate discard pile. There are five actions you can do during the play phase. You can do four of them as many times as you like, as long as you can afford it. Build, sprawl, remodel, and reorganize. The fifth action is gamble, but you can only do it once per turn. Build. You are building your casino. In any lot that you own, you are able to pay the amount on the board to remove your player marker and choose a casino tile to replace it. There are a limited number of casino tiles in every color. Once they're on the board, they are no longer able to be chosen. You then add a die to the center of the tile with the face-up value equal to the value printed on the board. Sprawl. If you are the boss of a casino and want to expand, but you don't own any lots adjacent to your casino, you can instead sprawl. To sprawl, there needs to be an available tile that is the same color of your casino. Also, the lot you are taking over cannot be owned by another player. If both conditions are met, you can pay double the amount on the lot and expand your casino as if building. Sprawling has its risks. If a card is drawn with the lot that another player has sprawled into, they then replace your die with their own and you lose ownership of that tile. If you run out of dice but need a dice to build or to sprawl, choose a die that has already been placed on the board and put it on the new tile. That leaves the tile without a die unowned. That tile stays on the board as part of that casino and still counts towards points. Remodel. If you are the boss of a casino, you are able to remodel it and change the color of the casino tiles. Remodeling costs $5 per tile, and there have to be enough available tiles to replace all of your casino tiles. Reorganize. If you own part of a casino, you are able to reorganize. Reorganizing costs $1 per pip for the casino you are reorganizing. Once paid, every player takes their dice from that casino and re-rolls them. The re-rolled dice then get placed back onto each player's tile. If you own more than one tile in the casino, you get to choose which dice goes on which tile. Each die can only be reorganized once per turn, but you can reorganize multiple casinos in a single turn. Gamble. Any casino that you are not the boss of allows you to gamble. You can only gamble once per turn. The player who is the boss of the casino where you would like to gamble receives the house card. You can wager as much as you can afford, as much as the boss can pay out, or $5 per casino tile, whichever is lower. The gambling player rolls two dice. If they rolled between a five and an eight, they pay the house. 
if they rolled a three, four, or nine through 11, the house pays them. If they roll a two or a 12, the house pays them double or up to whatever they have. There is a variant of gamble that allows the casino boss to split the risk with the bank. If the gambler wins, the casino pays half, rounded down, and the bank pays the rest. If the casino wins, the casino only gets half, rounded down, the bank gets the rest. It is your choice if you would like to play with this variant. Just make sure that all players are in agreement. If, after an action, any players are tied as a casino's boss, the tied dice must be re-rolled. After the re-roll, if there is still a tie, then those dice are re-rolled. This continues until one player comes out as the boss of the casino. Sometimes, this will lead to neither of the tied players ending up as the boss of the casino. If a single player has tied with only themselves as the casino's boss, their dice do not need to be re-rolled. If there are ties between dice that are not the highest value, they also do not need to be re-rolled. Trading. Trading is something that you are also able to do throughout the game. It isn't considered an action and can happen at any time on anyone's turn. You are able to trade money, lots, dice in a casino, and if it is your turn, actions. You cannot, however, trade casino tiles, points, or promises. The game ends when a player draws the end game card or if any player reaches 90 points. When you pull the end game card, you do payouts and points as usual. The player with the most points at the end of the game will be the winner. Any ties are resolved in true Vegas fashion with money. If you are playing a two-player game, you ignore the F block. If you draw a card from the F block, do everything from the draw phase except placing your player marker on the lot. After discarding, draw a new card and repeat the draw phase. You will continue to repeat the draw phase until you are able to place a lot. You are now ready to play Lords of Vegas. This is a house favorite and consistently in rotation, yet we have never had the impossible happen to end a game by reaching 90 points. Let us know down in the comments what your highest score has been. As always, if you like what we're doing, hit that like button. And remember to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get reminders of our newest videos.